So guys, a funny thing happened to me one day while I was recording. I really, really, really wanted to share these videos with you. And as I told you, I have been making haul videos ahead. So I had a day where I recorded four videos. And for some reason, the first three that I recorded, recorded without sound. I don't know what happened. I don't know why the fourth one has sound. This one did not have sound. Um, this is a Thrifty Thursday video. It's hosted by Terry, uh, I'm sorry, Sherry over at Turquoise Dreaming. Um, you can go visit her channel. I will um, link it in the description box. I think I, so, at some point in this video here, I point to down, which I think I'm talking about the description box, but I'm not sure because I can't hear anything. Um, so uh, yeah, you can go over to her channel, hashtag Thrifty Thursday or visit her. Um, this was uh, a multi-family yard sale. Um, these were 25 cents. I cut the band, the rubber bands out because they were just looped through the ends. And I thought the headbands made really, really cute trim. Uh, I won't do anything with the rubber bands. Um, and I showed you those rubber bands that I cut off of those headbands because um, you can see that they're marked with some letters. Those sh indicate whose they were because it was multifamily. But I think these make really, really cute trim. They have uh, this flower lace kind of eyelet pattern. They feel like suede. Um, and I really like the way they look. I think that they'll go de good down the spine of a book. Um, or you could cut them in half and use them as edging. Um, it's like something other than white eyelet trim. Because that's what they remind me of a little bit. So I got both of these at the yard sale and they were 25 cents a piece. So um, now when I was at this yard sale, uh, there were some ladies that were selling fabrics. Um, I'm not going to be able to tell you prices because I probably told you when the sound were, uh, when I was first doing the video, but I don't remember now. Um, so as you can see, I got this Christmas fabric with the poinsettias on it. And at first there, I was showing you the border. I think that that will make a really good, um, you could use it as a spine down the back, or you could use it as a part of a cover. Um, trimmed with some lace and stuff to finish covering the cover unless you have a small book. Uh, you can fussy cut out these poinsettias. There was a ton of this fabric. It was, it had to be at least two yards. Um, so, and it wasn't expensive. Um, I have no idea what all those hand motions were. So <laughs> your guess is as good as mine. But I liked the Christmas fabric. I think I paid a dollar for it, maybe two. I, like I said, the prices are going to be guesswork unless there's something marked. Like those headbands still have the little tape pieces on them that said 25 cents, which is why I remember them being 25 cents. Um, then I got, that's marked $2. It is just a whole bag of different kinds of cards uh, for altering. Um, and for $2 for that many, I mean, you sell a deck of cards some places sell a deck of cards for a dollar. So here I'm going to go through all the different kinds. Of, there were Winnie the Pooh counting cards. Um, and then on the other side, they seem to be some sort of word game where you connect the words, the letters with each other. I wasn't sure if it had to do with the numbers, maybe some sort of adding game if you did a, I don't know. I didn't know what it was. And then there was some more Winnie the Pooh ones that were words. I was wondering if these were like make compound words. So um, if you put two words together that could make a compound word, it would give you the other half of the picture. But I didn't go through the deck to find out. Um, but yeah, again, they're word pictures with half a picture on the other side that you're supposed to put together. There's no instructions. So if there's any game, if, there, if these are some sort of game, I don't have the instructions for it. So, yeah. Um, this one was, as you can see, addition cards. I'm going to say I really hope the sound is recording this time because I'm going to be really upset if I go through this again. Then I'm just going to think the video is cursed and I'm, I'm not going to keep it. 
Uh, I, I'm i talking about the finish because the ones that are... The shinier side, I think, is coated, and the back side didn't feel like it was. So um, the shiny sides, sometimes I feel like they might need scuffing up before you try and stick something to them. Because when the glue dries, it just sits on the surface, and then it just peels off. Um, so I got a stack of multiplication cards. Again, I think one side felt coated and one side felt like cardstock. Um, then there were some Sesame Street cards it looks like I'm pulling out. These ones, oh no, those are Disney Princess there on the top. Uh, these ones are letters and then a word on the back with a Sesame, uh, or not necessarily a Sesame Street character, a word on the back that begins with that letter. So these were kind of fun. Um, if you're doing kids journals or I've got all those, I've got several um, Sesame Street little golden books. I think there I was making a comment about Snuffleupagus in his socks. Um, but I have several Sesame Street little golden books that those would make great cards in. So I got a set of Barbie cards. Um, the They're kind of cute. I would probably cover up the Barbie side, but the little flowers and stuff are cute and their addition problems with pictures. Uh, and then these were princess cards, so shapes to count and then either the number word or the number on the back. Um, I don't know. And then I think each little emblem at the top was a different princess or they were different princesses. They probably repeated. I mean, they, Disney doesn't, they have a lot of princesses. They don't have that many. Uh, and then these words I thought were interesting. They had or these cards I thought were interesting. They have these cards like N is four and then a blank. I don't know if you're supposed to write on them or uh, just sort of uh, like you hold it up or like the teacher holds onto that card or whatever. And then you say N is four and then they find the card that goes with it. Um, there's a couple different ways you could do that, I suppose. I assume it's a Care Bears deck. I, I, I guess that all those went together. Um, then this is more Sesame Street, but this is numbers. Oh, and letters. That's a mixed deck. Uh, the pictures are cool. I think that, um, again, because I have Sesame Street little golden books, I thought these would make good, uh, pocket ephemera, um, uh, for tucks and stuff like that. Um. So I don't know what I'm, that was alphabet cards. That one's blank on the back. Uh, characters, there's number cards. I don't, I have no idea why. I'm, so that stack of cards. And then these don't appear to be any particular, like they're not Disney, they're not Sesame Street. There's a bug and a bus, and then you have the letter, you have the UG, and I guess you have to find a B. And there's a J, so I guess you would find the rest of the jet, and it would have the ET on the end. So um, those are spelling cards, phonics cards. Uh, I'm assuming there I'm talking about putting them in pockets and the different sizes, because there are several different sizes of cards there, which was nice. So you have those little ones that we were just looking at with partial words on them. And then you have the really big ones like those multiplication and these division cards. And it looks like those division cards are the partners to those multiplication cards. So um, a whole box of those, torn box, but a whole box. And then here's more multiplication cards. I feel like multiplication cards are the ones that I find the most. These I think were... Um, not coated on either side. So there's no shiny surface. Both sides of those are um, just paper. They were just cardstock cards. So that was kind of nice because you could go either way with those. And now we're going to put them all away. Um, yeah, I will tell you this, guys. When I went through and I saw that these videos had no sound, I was I was a little bummed. So I decided while I'm sitting here um, recording my voice and hopefully I can get my editing software and put this voice over this video, I'm watching the video. 
and I'm trying to, you know, give you the information from the hall um, as best I can, because I like to share the halls with you. I think they're fun. I like watching other people's halls. It's fun to see, especially if they, um, I try to talk about not just what I got or how much it cost, but what my thought process was when I bought it, like what I was thinking I would use it for. So that's one of the things I like. And I like when I hear other people, they like go find something and I think it's really cool. And then they sh tell me, oh, I thought I would use it for this. Okay. There was a lady that had some craft stuff. I do remember her table. She had a lot of creative memory stuff. Um, I don't have that stamp. I have a square one that I can't find and I have a hexagon one and they're made for, so you punch the little one and then you punch the big one around it and you can make rings. Or you can just make different size circles. So either way. Um, and she sold that for $4 though. I mean, that's probably half of what Creative Memory sells it for. Maybe a little less. Um, I will say that I, when I go to a yard sale, I'm not expecting to pay half price for something. Especially since if the person brand new, they have half price sales. Um, these are used. I'm expecting to pay like a dollar, maybe for that stamp. Um, this set of alphabet stamps I thought was really cool because it's got the lowercase and the uppercase letter on the same block. So, and as hard as they are to store, guys, I like mounted stamps better than sheets. Maybe I'm an odd duck, but I like mounted stamps better than sheets. I mean, I'll find some way to store them, but I, I just prefer them that way. Um, this one had punctuation and I was, I think... Oh, it was coming unglued. It's quote, it looks like quotation marks and a little extra piece of rubber on there uh, and a question mark. And then the other one looks like uh, an and symbol and an exclamation point. I think there's a punctuation one missing. All the alphabet is there. Since filming this video, because I think in the video I say I'm not going to go through the alphabet and check, uh, she did charge me $5 for that set of stamps. Again, it's not bad for a set of stamps, but it's not yard sale for a set of stamps, if you know what I mean. Um, and I think that's what I'm talking about here is how much I expect to pay. Because she had more stuff, but I wasn't willing to pay her prices for it. Not at a yard sale, not used. Um, what else do we get? I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's the directions for the stamps. <laughs> I'm not really sure why you need directions for stamps, but. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna have to get something to drink after I'm done doing this voiceover. Um, I don't know what I'm hunting for here. This was more than one thing. I did the multifamily yard sale and then I did, and let me see what I pull out of this bag. I did a church rummage sale. Another one, because I did one by my mom's. This one was up by me. Uh, they were doing books really cheap. I'm going to tell you guys, everything I show you from here on out in this video was cost me $8.75. Um, the ladies were basically, I mean, they were giving stuff away. Uh, so I, I, I want to say the books were like 25 cents, maybe 50 cents. Because when you see the stack of stuff, because uh, including the fabric that I show you, um, it's funny talking ahead about it because I've already done it. Um, I really like these coloring books. This particular lady does her coloring books. And I think I have another copy of this secret garden one, uh, but mine doesn't do this. It doesn't have a cover on it. So um, I thought the cover was really neat. I even like the print on the craft paper. I think it's really, really uh nifty. I don't know how easy it would be to color unless you use like paint or something that would cover up the craft paper, but I thought it was really neat. She does find, there's things to find in her book, which I think is a lot of fun. I think the, um, it tells you in the back where the things are. And then there's the list or here's the list of what you can find in the book. And it tells you like, find th there's this many frogs hidden in this book, or there's this many bugs hidden in this book. I think on this page, uh, there's a key. So there's four keys hidden in the book and there's one of them. And there, that stuff is scattered all throughout the book like that. 
which I think makes her coloring books a little bit unique. I mean, there's little unique gimmicks to all kinds of these coloring books, but I, I like hers uh, for that. And her art, I like her art. I mean, the art is really cool. And I think it would be a lot of fun to color. The problem is with all the other stuff I'm doing with the junk journaling and getting that off the ground, I, I don't have time to sit and color necessarily, but I'd like to make some time. I really want to watercolor them. I think it would be fun to watercolor. Okay, I got this book. Um, this was in a kid's room, by the way. They had a little separate room for kids stuff. Um, I really like these pictures. And since doing this haul, I will say that I have a new idea for these because they're so big. Um, and that is to make them backgrounds for journaling cards or rather than trying to get the whole picture, um, those, I was going to fussy cut those butterflies. I, I like the butterflies, but rather than try to get the whole picture, cut out like a pattern portion of it and use it as background and then put stuff on top of it. This I liked because the birds were illustrated and they're with their nests in a lot of cases. So it's like a bird in a birdhouse or a bird in his nest or an owl in his nest and there's eggs, and they're in a tree on a branch. So it's like a whole scene kind of a thing. Um, I thought they would be fun on tags or journaling cards um, as focal points with like a doily behind them or something like that, and some flowers. Uh, and then because books were so cheap, not that I really necessarily needed another dictionary, but these pages were different than, they aged different than other pages that I had. So I figured, what the heck? Um, and I got this dictionary as well. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure their books were like 50 cents, something like that. Uh, if you count all this up though, I, I'm, I'm struggling to remember prices because there's one thing in here that I do remember. All of this stuff is actually $3.75. $3 so a lot of this stuff they just gave me for a quarter. These decks of cards, that whole box of cards, 25 cents. I do remember that because I asked a lady, they weren't marked. And I asked a lady, how much are these? And she said, just tell them at the front, I said 25 cents a box. Um, uh, also, since filming this video, I have seen somebody take these decks of cards and if they're flowers like this, and I didn't really think about it. I was just like, leave the flowers or alter. Um, they took the flowers and used it as a base and then put butterflies and quotes and things over top of it. And that was their background, which I think is a really cool idea. That was not the only box of cards I got. So here's another bag. Like I said, there's something at the end of this haul that caught, that was $5 of the $8.75 on its own. So all of this stuff is three, was $3.75. There's some more. I think both decks have the same back on these. It's that little, yeah, that little basket of flowers with the bow. So I have a ton of that card. Two decks worth, actually. <laughs> uh, again, 25 cents and a nice little box. And here's another one. It's in a nice little plastic box. I liked these. It was cardinal, uh, two cardinals, actually, a male and a female, and then a chickadee and some flowers. So I liked those cards and they're aged. These are older cards. They're aged. They don't feel coded really all that much anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. Like I said, my throat's drying out. Um, oh, we must have had a little skip there in the video. Somebody must have come down or I must have gotten a phone call. And since I can't hear it, I don't know which. Here's all the fabric I got. So I thought this tea towel, it seems like a tea towel. It's kind of large. But I thought the jars were neat, and my thought was that I could cut them out um, individually. Um, yeah, see, cut out the jar and then use it on a tag or as a background or on a page or back it on something and use it as a pocket. Um, you know, if I get better at stitching straight lines, I could stitch it onto some cardstock and uh, use it as journaling cards. Um, I just thought the jars of uh, stuff was really cute. Cooking journals. I mean, really, it could go in a picnic journal, um, you know, any of that kind of thing. So I really liked, uh, and it's not like bright white. It, it was a, I mean, as you can see, there's some white stuff sitting there. So getting stuff out of the way. Um, I'm putting it over on the table to the side that I tell you guys I always set up my I cover with stuff and then take a picture to make the thumbnails. Okay, this was a pillowcase and I just liked the edge. 
Um, I have been watching videos on slow stitching since I went to the Goodwill bins and found, I don't know if you all have seen the Goodwill bins video by now, but I went to the Goodwill bins and I found lots of scrap fabric and that pillowcase is a candidate after I cut the lace off the side. Uh, that pillowcase is a candidate for a uh, slow stitch background. So, but I really like the lace on the edge. I thought it would make great trim. So that's going to get cut off of there and then I'll just have the plain white material to use. Uh, this was a valance and two curtain tie backs. Um, I don't know if they're homemade or not. I liked the little mini floral print and then the underside is eyelet. I've been collecting eyelet. I'm like hoarding it. I have a ton of it. Um, I think I'm going to cut some of it free of like there's two of the tie back. So I have two strips of whatever that that eyelet and the eyelet on the valance is different. Um, so like, see, you lift that up and there's like a whole wide band of it. And then on this one, it's just that little, which I like. I like the little eyelet, too. Um, and then the little flowers. I like the little flower pattern. I thought it was really cute. I thought it would re look really cute on a spring journal. And I was thinking that I would tea dye maybe some of my eyelet lace because I have a ton. Um, this looked like some sort of a table runner. Uh, again, it's like similar to eyelet lace. I don't know if it's still considered eyelet lace. Uh, I like this one. This again is also a table runner of some sort. Uh, I like the rose. I like the cutout lace. Um, I think it's really neat. I love these bo the border on this. So it's three squares divided by the crocheted border. And it's got that basket. And I like the flower basket. And then I love the border because you got you can use it wide or it looks like two strips. I could cut it in half and use it that way. And then there was this. That says a dollar. I don't think she charged me a dollar. Like I said, all this was $3.75, guys. Keep that in mind. All the fabric, all the books. Um, the I, lo I love the embroidery pattern on this. I think I had just watched somebody who had taken uh, embroidery patterns like this and copied them on their uh, on a copy machine. And then printed them out. I think that's a great idea. And I'm that's a great candidate for that. A nice big flower basket to copy. Um, I'm wandering off and putting stuff on the thumbnail table. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm doing with all this. I, I got to get it out of the way because I got more stuff. Also, I think in this video, um, I end this haul. I don't know if it's right here. Do I have something else to show? Oh, no, I have some cards. <clears throat> so I got a stack of cards. I think they gave me all these cards for 25 cents, too. Everything was a quarter. Um, so we're going to go through these cards. Uh, there was two stacks. Um, I like the birds. I like the old car. I think that's really cute. And the the boats, I think, um, were would be cool in a nautical journal. Or even a sh uh, like a seashore journal. I like the old country house with the garden. Uh, this would be uh, for a 4th of July journal or something of that nature. Again, boats. I like this one. This one was like watercolor. I like that. That's really neat. Uh, and then the flower box. I just liked it. I thought it looked very spring. Um, oh, no. There's three stacks. So, of course, more envelopes. So we have a wreath. These are Christmas cards then. Uh, Santa in a sleigh. Oh, I like the birdhouse with the birds. And then here's a sleigh full of toys for, uh, I, I guess Santa's loaded his sleigh on his way. That's really cute in the bucket with the little angel, very um, primitive country. <clears throat> Christmas tree and a sleigh with a Christmas tree. I guess Santa's going to bring them presents and a tree. Uh, and then, oh, I love the snowman. I like the snowman a lot. And then that odd looking tree. <laughs> I guess that's a tree. Oh, somebody made it out of wood and garland, I guess. And here's another set of Christmas cards. I have plenty of stuff for Christmas journals, guys. 
So season's greetings. The fireplace is really cute with the stocking, although it's one lonely stocking. The church is pretty. That looks like watercolor also. There's a country small town at Christmas. Um, oh, the little drummer boy and the baby Jesus. That's nice. I like that one. Uh, mailbox with birds and stuff. I think it took me a minute to figure out what that was. That one reminds me of a Thomas Kincaid painting. Um, I like the fact that they stopped to look at the Christmas tree outside the church. And then here's a little small town. Um, it looks kind of old fashioned with the sleigh and everything. And then this definitely looks old fashioned when ice skating was a thing that you did on the frozen lake in your dress. So very Victorian times, uh, turn of the century, maybe. And then here's a rabbit waiting for Santa, I guess, with his present and his carrots. Uh, here's the Holy Family nativity. And here's Santa. That is a night before Christmas if I ever saw one. Uh, so, and I, I think I have a night before Christmas little golden book. And then I've got some night before Christmas other books that I wanted to get ephemera out of. So that will be a good candidate to go in a night before Christmas journal or a Christmas journal used with that stuff. So here I'm going to collect up all these cards. Um, I do believe that the first time around, I cut this video off here. I think I ended it here. Now, everything that you saw from the point of me telling you that this, that we were starting the church rummage sale, and we were done with the multifamily yard sale. Everything you've seen so far totaled $3.75. This stuck in my head be just because it was so cheap. Um, and the other reason it stuck in my head is I cut this video off and then I have to come back and add another piece to it because I remembered the big $5 item. So I'm explaining that here where I tell you that, oops, I forgot something. And it is this set of, it's an Audubon encyclopedia set. Um, there are 12 in the set. I'm counting them. I think I got 10, 11, and 12 out to show you. Um, and I think I'm noticing the letters on the spine. It's weird talking about what you're doing when you're, when you can't hear it. So watching this video with no sound is very strange. Um, <laughs> and trying to imagine what I should be saying. Uh, these are nice and aged. There's lots of nature photographs. Audubon is all kinds of nature stuff. So uh, there's lots of nature photographs, but there's also illustrations. So I really liked a lot of the illustrations and I can't decide if I want to pull out the illustrations I like and then turn it into altered books. But I really like the birds. And then I'm saying here that these lay really flat. And that's why I said the thing about altered books, because they're sewn in signatures and um, no matter where you turn, the book lays flat. And when I've watched videos about making actual art piece altered books, they talk about wanting a book that will lay flat so that you can make a two page spread and it not be difficult. Um, and the sewn in signatures are what they prefer for art ones. Um, so I'm wondering if I, now I don't know that I'll turn it into an art one. I, but I think that it would be really fun to um, make some of them altered books. I don't know yet. It's a set of 12. So like they could be a set of monthly journals. Uh, so that is also a thought that I had because they're a nice size. So with 12 of them, I could make one, I'd make a January journal, a February journal, so on and so forth. Uh, they might be candidates for... Um, a uh, set of journals that I've been wanting to do. I want to do gnomes, the little gnomes we see all over the place. They could be, I could do 12 gnome journals, one for each month of the year. Um, you know, it. there's lots of possibilities because I have a set of all the same size books. Um, I, this is just another flip through of another one. Ugh, those toads. That's a really cool picture. That's a photograph. And then here are some illustra bird illustrations again which of course I really like the illustrations. Um, I don't mind the photographs. I take pictures. I just am for journals. For some reason, I like illustrations better. 
Um, and I think I look at this one and not all of them lay flat. Oh, I'm trying to find you a copyright. Let me see if I can read that. Uh, 1960 something. I would pull one out, but I can't, I don't know where I put them. They're around here somewhere. That one does not lay flat. So that wouldn't be as good a candidate for an altered book. Um, so anyway, that was the add on. And that this set, when I took it up there, the ladies asked me how much would I be willing to pay them for it? And it was a church rummage sale. So I didn't want to go too low. And, um, because I didn't know how they were selling them. Because a lot of times you come across a set of books and they're selling them individually. They sold them to me as the set and they gave me the set for $5. That was the end of those. And I hope you don't mind the voiceovers because there are two more of these that I'm going to be doing. So um, I'll see you guys in the next one.